Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about the image intensifier tubes. So, image intensifier tube. So, this is the picture of an image intensifier tube. So, what does this image intensifier tube make? So, so, what actually is that? If you see, this is a glass envelope. So, if you see this, this is made up of an evacuated glass envelope. Let me first tell you what this is. First, there is an evacuated glass envelope and there are four important parts. One, there is input phosphor or photo and photocathode. So, this is the input phosphor and photocathode. There are electrostatic focusing lens are present here and there is an accelerating anode which is present here and there is an output phosphor. So, if the X-ray beam and passes through the patient, it will enter the image intensifier tube. This hole is called as image intensifier tube. So, first, if there is an X-ray tube, so this X-ray tube, X-ray beam will enter the image intensifier tube like this. Once it enters the image intensifier tube, this is the input fluorescent screen. This input fluorescent screen which is present here, it will absorb the X-rays. When it absorbs the X-rays and the X-ray photon energy, the X-ray energy, X-ray photon energy here is converted to light energy. The input phosphor will absorb the X-rays and it gets and it converts it into light. This light will now, it will strike the photocathode. This light will strike the photocathode and this photocathode will produce the photoelectrons. Okay, these photoelectrons will start accelerating towards the anode. So, this is the anode. So, this photoelectrons will accelerate towards the anode. This acceleration of photoelectrons towards the anode is focused by the, um, by these electrostatic, electrostatic focusing lens will focus the flow of electrons towards the anode. So, these electrostatic lens will focus the flow of electrons towards the anode. Now, in, as the electrons flow from cathode to, towards the anode, they are focused by the electrostatic lens. So, from here, they will enter the output screen. This output screen will emit the light photons. And these light photons will carry the photo fluoroscopic image. So, when the electrons, when these electrons, when they now strike the uh, output fluorescent screen, so this, these electrons will now activate the, are now activated by the fluorescent screen. This fluorescent screen will emit the light photons. These light photons will mainly contain the fluoroscopic image. So, in the image intensifier, the X-ray photon is converted to the light photon. And then the light photons are again converted to the electrons. These electrons are again converted to the light photons. So, this is about the image intensifier design. So, let us learn about the main, uh, each of them in detail. So, we have learned uh, the process from here. The electrons will come and they are targeted here, right? Now, let us learn about each part in detail. So, first we have this input fluorescent screen or photocathode. This is the picture showing the input, for, input fluorescent screen or photocathode. So, this is the input fluorescent screen, right? So, this input fluorescent screen is mainly made up of cesium iodide. The input phosphor, this is recently it is made up of cesium, cesium iodide. But older image intensifiers, the input phosphor mainly contains silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide. So, silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide is the input phosphor for older uh, fluorescent screens. This cesium iodide is actually deposited onto a thin aluminium substrate. So, this is the thin aluminium substrate onto, this is the thin aluminium substrate onto which the cesium iodide or input phosphor is deposited. So, this aluminium uh, so the input phosphor or cesium iodide is deposited onto the aluminium substrate by a process called as vapor depolarization. 
one more important thing is that the deposition of the crystals of the cesium iodide these crystals are deposited perpendicular to the aluminium substrate so this is the aluminium substrate these crystals are deposited perpendicularly as crystals has needle shaped crystals uh, perpendicular to the substrate now this is very important because because they are perpendicular to the uh, substrate so this is the substrate that are, which is aluminium substrate this is the cesium iodide crystals because they are perpendicular to the aluminium substrate the light diffu diffusion there is minimal lateral light diffusion the light diffusion is minimal to the lateral lateral light diffusion is minimal then the needles with this crystalline shaped needles first they will absorb the so if this is the needle they will absorb the x-ray photon once they absorb the x-ray photon the, these will produce light so the cesium iodide crystals will now absorb the x-ray photon and they produce the light this light is transmitted to the photocathode this is transmitted to the photocathode now one important thing is that this cesium iodide input screens are better when compared to the old uh, silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide. There are three characteristics of the cesium iodide which are very important and which makes cesium iodide superior when compared to silver activated zinc cadmium crystals. They are number one, the orientation of the crystals. Here there is vertical orientation of crystals which is very good for cesium iodide when compared to aluminum sorry when compared to silver activated zinc sulfide cadmium zinc sulfide one more is greater packing density that means more crystals are packed at a point of uh, phase so there is greater packing density is one more advantage then third is better or effective atomic number is more favorable more favorable effective atomic number so these are the three main important things one vertical orientation of crystal second greater packaging density third effective atomic number are the three uh, properties for cesium iodide to be better when compared to the silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide then this cesium iodide is mainly vacuum deposited also it is present in the vacuum because it is present in the vacuum it does not require any inert binder it does not require any inert binder so it is more active material which can be packed in a little amount of space so this packing density of cesium iodide is three times when compared to three times that of silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide and uh, there is the thickness of this uh, phosphor the thickness of this phosphor if you see the thickness of uh, uh, silver activated sorry, thickness of silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide is 0 0.3 millimeters but the thickness of the uh, cesium iodide is actually 0 0.1 mm so because it is a thinner shaped phosphor with needle shaped crystals both these thinner thinner with needle shaped crystals have increased the resolution of the cesium iodide so the resolution of the cesium iodide is about four line pairs per millimeter the resolution of cesium iodide is four line pairs per millimeter so cesium iodide is very better when compared to silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide then you see the maximum photoelectric here this uh, phosphor input phosphor will absorb x-ray photons and they will emit electrons they will emit light right they will they will act, absorb the x-ray photons are absorbed and they will emit light so the emission of this light is mainly when photoelectric effect occurs right so this photo this absorption of x-ray photon by cesium iodide is by photoelectric absorption so the for the photoelectric absorption as we have learned in our last classes we need something called as k absorption edge the k absorption edge of the phosphor should be almost 
equal to the X-ray beam energy. The X-ray beam energy and the K phosphor of an edge of an electron should be almost equal to for the maximum absorption of X-ray photon to take place. And it should not exceed the energy of this K absorption. It should not be more than Sorry, this energy of K absorption, it should not be more than X-ray beam energy. If the energy of K absorption, it is more than X-ray beam energy, then obviously the X-ray beam does not have the energy to replace the inner electron, inner shell electrons, inner shell K absorption edge, meaning that the K shell binding energy. The K shell binding energy, if it's more than the X-ray beam energy, then the X-ray beam does not have the strength to, uh, to displace the electron from the K shell, then the photoelectric absorption does not occur. So always the K shell absorption should be less, less than the X-ray beam energy. But here if you see the X-ray beam energy, this X-ray beam is actually a whole spectrum. It's not one energy. It is a whole spectrum with uh, varying energies. We have minimum energy and we have maximum energy also. Whereas this K edge is a single energy, not a group, not a spectrum of energy. Whereas X-ray beam energy is a spectrum of energy. And if you see the mean, the mean of the X-ray beam energy is one third of the peak energy. So it is one third of the peak energy. So so what we have to see is that the uh, X the uh, the CCM iodide the K the X-ray beam energy obviously it should be more than the K shell binding energy. It should be more than the K shell binding energy. This X-ray beam energy contains a spectrum of energies, whereas K shell binding energy is a single band of energy. Whereas the mean of this X-ray binding energy is one third of that of peak energy. Okay. Normally, if you see in our chloroscopy for adults, in most of our fluoroscopy, the X-ray or the peak energy of fluoroscopy will be around 180 to 120 kilo, kilo voltage peak. So mean energy will be one third of the 80 to 120, which is nothing but 30 to 40 kilo electron volts. Okay, the X-ray beam energy, peak energy will be 80 to 120 kilo volt peak whereas that of uh, um, so the mean energy will be 30 to 40 kilo electron volt as we have already said previously we used to use silver sorry silver activated zinc cadmium bromide we used to use silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide any sulfide okay silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide now uh, the if you see the X-ray beam energy, it is around 30 to 40 kilo electron volts. So we'll see the K shell binding energy of these atoms. K shell binding energy of sulfur is around 2.5, whereas K shell binding energy of zinc is around 9.7, cadmium is around 26.7, cesium, which is used nowadays, it is around 36. So if you see the mean energy is around 30 to 40 kilo electron volts, which is almost nearer to the uh, nearer to the K shell binding energy of cesium. Whereas K shell binding energy of sulfur, zinc, cadmium are lesser when compared to the mean energy. That means most energy, peak energy is 80 to 150, but mean energy is very less. But most of the X-ray beam consists of energy between 30 to 40 kilo electron volts, which is almost similar to cesium facial binding energy. So, as a result, cesium iodide will absorb two thirds of the incident beam because of having good, you know, uh, having uh, because it has the 
एक्स रे बीम केशल बाइंडिंग एनर्जी ऑफ सिमिलर टू दैट ऑफ एक्स रे बीम वेर एस दिस सिल्वर एक्टिवेटेड जिंक कैडमियम सल्फाइड विल ओनली एब्जॉर्ब लेस दैन वन थर्ड ऑफ द इंसिडेंट ब्रीम तो हैज ए रिजल्ट सीसीएम आयोडाइड इज बेटर इन एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ इंसिडेंट ब्रीम ऑल्सो सो दिस इज अबाउट द फ्लोरोसेंट स्क्रीन सो वी आर डन विद द फ्लोरोसेंट next the next important thing is about the photo cathode so this fluorescent screen will now uh, now what happens is this fluorescent screen will now emit the photons so what happens first there is x ray photons these x ray photons will now go to the fluorescent screen this fluorescent screen will will emit light photons these light photons will now go into the photo cathode so what is this photo cathode photo cathode is a photo emissive metal and it is made up of antimony which is pm which is sb the uh, sb is its shortcut so antimony and ccm it, it can, contains a mixture of antimony and ccm compounds when the light will strike the fluorescent material it produces light photons these light photons are will uh, are will strike the photo cathode now this photo cathode will cause emission of photo electrons this photo electron emission the quantity of photo electrons emitted is directly proportional to the brightness of screen okay then this photo cathode is directly applied or directly present directly applied to the cesium iodide input phosphor so light from the ccm iodide will directly pass or directly passes into the photo cathode in previously in the past there used to be a thin light transparent barrier in the past there used to be a transparent barrier between the uh, fluorescent screen of ccm iodide and the photo cathode there used to be a transparent transparent barrier and but now there is no transparent barrier there is direct passage of light from the fluorescent screen to the photo cathode now let us see first from the x ray photons will first go through the uh, aluminum substrate it goes to the fluorescent screen this fluorescent screen will produce light which will go to the photo cathode this photo cathode will now emit the electrons the ccm iodide will produce light proportional to the intensity of the x ray beam and this light photons will react with this photo cathode and this photo cathode from the photo cathode photo electrons are emitted these photo electrons are directly proportional to the intensity of the light and it is important for the brightness of the screen so we have learned about the photo cathode and input fluorescent screen now let us learn some important points about the electrostatic focusing lens these electrostatic focusing lens are these two or there will be many these are actually made up of series of positively charged electrodes so these electrostatic lenses are made up of a series of positively charged electrons these electrons will focus these are made up of positively charged electrodes these are made up of positively charged electrodes these are plated onto the inner surface of the glass envelope so this is the glass envelope through the inner surface of glass envelope they are placed now the electrodes will focus what is the main importance of this electrodes is that these electrodes will focus the electron beam there is a beam of electrons which is flowing from the photo cathode to the output phosphorus fluorescent screen now this uh, electrostatic lens will focus the electron beam as it flows from the photo cathode to the output phosphor see the electrons the electrons from this point will flow like this and they both will meet here at focal point all the electrons will meet at focal point and these electrons will cross to the opposite side and they are the electrons focusing will get inverted and here they will um, they will activate this part of the fluorescent screen on the opposite side 
so this will result in formation of inverse image so meaning this one this one is present here at one this point the electrons from this point will go like this they will uh, they they'll, they'll, they are, they reach the focal point and from there they reach the opposite side or they invert to the opposite side and now reach the opposite side fluorescent screen so this process is called as point inversion this is called as point inversion because all the electrons which are released from the photocathode will slowly they will are uh, they are focused at one point has they re, has the focal point and they reach the focal point from the focal point they will they are inverted or they pass to the opposite side uh, they, they they are inverted and they pass to the opposite side and now they will focus they are focused onto a specific point on the opposite side of the output phosphor so if you want the focusing to be perfect all these photo electrons here should pass through the same distance and for the for all fo photo electrons to pass through the same distance for make that this will happen the photo cathode and the fluorescent screen this is made to be curved this is made this photo cathode or fluorescent screen is made curved so that the electrons from these edges the so that the electrons from the ed from these edges will pass or will travel the same distance as that of the central electron this electron from the central part travels the same distance as that of this electrons from the curves or peripheral region so the image of the output phosphor is reduced in size see this is the input phosphor whereas in, in, image on the output phosphor is completely reduced in size so this is about the electrostatic focusing lens the next important thing here is this anode here we have the anode which is called as accelerating anode this is the image tube this is the neck of the image tube so anode is present at the neck of the image tube what, the, what is the function of this anode this anode will accelerate or increase the velocity so this anode will accelerate the electrons which are emitted from the photocathode these electrons once they reach the anode they will get accelerated the anode is pre is present at a positive potential of 25 to 35 kilo volts relative to that of photocathode relative to this pho photocathode the anode is kept at a potential difference of 25 to 35 kilo volts and has a result because of this positive kilo volts this will tremendously uh, or this will accelerate the electrons at a large velocity so there will be increased velocity of the electrons as they pass through the anode then the last thing is this one this is called has output phosphor or output fluorescent screen the output phosphor or output fluorescent screen is mainly made up of silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide this is the same material used in input phosphor in older days olden days but nowadays we use silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide for output phosphor screens this silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide crystal size the crystal size of silver activated zinc cadmium sulfide and also the layer thickness crystal size and layer thickness both these are decreased to maintain the resolution of the image the diameter of the the diameter of this input phosphors is almost equal to half to 1 inch because the electrons are accelerated here at a great amounts of velocity there are more elect more because these electrons will strike the output phosphor screen and this output phosphor screen will again emit the light energy so there is more production has the velocity of electron increases the light produced also increases in the output phosphor screen okay now we will see some important you know how this output phosphor screen looks also so this is the output phosphor screen this output phosphor screen mainly contains thin aluminum layer and fluorescent screen 
This fluorescent screen contains silver activated cadmium zinc sulfide. So this fluorescent screen contains silver activated cadmium zinc sulfide. Now what happens is the electrons, photo electrons from the uh, photo which has emitted from the photo cathode will now pass through the thin aluminium layer. This thin aluminium layer will prevent the retrograde flow or will prevent the retrograde movement of light through the tube. It will prevent the retrograde movement of the light towards the screen. If there is no, if there is no aluminium, think that there is no aluminium, thin aluminium layer is not there. In such cases, these photoelectrons, they will strike the output fluorescent screen and sometimes they get scattered and they might reach the photocathode in the opposite direction. Okay, this reaching of photocathode to the opposite direction is not what we desire because this will result in production of scattered radiation again, which is not at all which is not at all required. So, as a result, to prevent that, we have a thin aluminium layer which prevents the light to flow backwards. It will prevent the light to flow backwards. This aluminium layer is very thin and has high energy photoelectrons. Because it is very thin, this high energy photoelectrons can pass through the aluminium layer very well to reach the output phosphor. Now, one more important thing is this, this whole assembly, this whole assembly is now, is, its whole assembly of X-ray image intensifier is enveloped by a glass envelope. This glass envelope is around 2 to 4 millimeters in thick and this whole setup, this whole equipment is uh, kept in a lead based container. It is kept in a lead lined metal container. This lead lined metal container will prevent the any stray radiation if it is present, it will prevent the stray radiation to reach, uh, to reach us, to reach the operator. Now, the next important thing is this output phosphor. This output phosphor will now they will act, they get activated by the photoelectrons and once output phosphor is activated by the photoelectrons it produces light photons. Now how are we going to see this light? The viewing of light is done by this mirror optical system for image intensifier. So this is the output phosphor. So the light is obtained from this. The light from this output phosphor will now pass through a series of mirrors. This light will pass through the series of lens. These are lens and it will pass through the mirrors. These are the mirrors. It passes through a series of lens and the series of mirrors. It gets focused and reflected several times. Once it gets focused and reflected several times in such a way that there is decreased loss of brightness loss of brightness is decreased and finally the it passes through the mirror different mirrors like this it goes and then one more time it gets reflected again it gets reflected and finally it passes through the lens and again it gets reflected and it reaches the observer's eye so this image which is obtained or this light image which is obtained from output phosphor is now reaches the observer's eye now this operator there is a very small viewing angle. If the operator views at this uh, in this angle only, he can see the image. If he views in this angle only, he can see the image. If he tries to view in any other angles, he cannot see the image. So that means there is smaller viewing angle is present in this situation. And one more problem is only one person or one observer or one radiologist can see this image whereas the others like who are uh, uh, training or in the beginning stage they cannot see this a big disadvantage but right now we are not using this system instead of that we have modern systems in the modern systems we have two things one there is a film camera and there is tv camera also so the image which is obtained on the photo spot here, the, this is the X-rays. These X-rays pass through the image lined, sorry, lead lined intensifier tubes. In the intensifier tube, first it has a photo cathode, not for photo cathode. So, sorry, first it has a fluorescent material. This fluorescent material will produce light. This light is uh, focused onto the photo cathode. Okay, this photo cathode will produce photo electrons. 
these photoelectrons are focused on by the electrostatic pressing sense and they will reach the anode the anode has a potential difference of around plus 25 to 35 volts positive relative to the photocathode and thus the electrons from the photocathode will uh, are focused onto the uh, on onto the output phosphor this output phosphor has a thin layer of aluminium this aluminium is very thin so the photoelectrons can pass through it once photoelectrons are passed it will not will prevent the retrograde flow or back flow of light like this it's prevented by this aluminium now this uh, uh, output phosphor will emit light this light is tra travels through many different uh, lens and mirror system to reach the observer's eye instead of that we have developed a system where we can it will reach the film camera and it will also reach the tv camera at the same time so that one person can view through this film camera whereas the other residents and other uh, training uh, personnel can view the image through the tv camera so for this what we have done is that the film the film camera is exposed to the phosphor so this is to but still we have to view so the film should get maximum radiation and tv should get minimum radiation so that we should be able to view the image through the tv camera at the same time the film should also get the sufficient amount of intensity to develop the image so we will expose the patient expose the patient and uh, the light is produced from the output phosphor this light will enter the mirror there is a mirror which is which is placed here this mirror is positioned here when we select the film mode where we need to take a film a mirror is placed here in the middle and this mirror reflects the uh, light which is obtained from this output phosphor and from the from once it reflects again the it is a lens is placed in the middle and the lens will focus the light to the film camera so that we get the film which is required and this mirror also is semi transparent this mirror is not completely reflective it is semi transparent so about 90% of the light will reach the film camera whereas 10% of the light will travel through the mirror and from here it is passed through one more layer of lens which will focus the image onto a tv camera so this 10 percent is sufficient to get the image on a tv to get the satisfactory image on the tv camera so by this way we can get the film at the same time we can get the proper camera also this we can get the image in a camera also recently we have in some systems there are tv camera and from tv camera there is fiber optic bundle this fiber optic bundle directly from the output phosphor the light is converted into the fiber optic some electrons and it is uh, it is sent to the tv signals directly so this is about the uh, Main important points about the fluoroscope image intensifier design.